So let's play a game today. Let's see if you can tell the difference between an iPhone picture and a Lumix G9 picture. Let's roll. I want to do a little test today to show you, well, to see if you can guess which photo is taken on which device because it's pretty incredible the results that you can get on just a simple smartphone compared to over a $2,500 camera. That's not to say that a $2,500 camera is not worth it, but you might be surprised if you get yourself a good app and take some pictures with some ideas because the results you can get are pretty incredible. I'm gonna put two photos side by side and see if you can tell a difference. Number one. Photo A or photo B? Is photo A the iPhone or is photo B the Lumix? Well. Surprised to say that photo B is the iPhone. It does have a surprisingly good camera. Uh, it uses something called computational photography. So what that basically means is it takes the three different lenses on the camera and condenses it down into one image. The three different lenses on the camera basically allow the, the software within it to calculate and create the phone this picture based on the depth of field of the subject and the type of lighting and saturation all built in. Okay, so let's try number two, iPhone or Lumix G9. That's right, if you guessed A, you guessed the iPhone. All right, so are you two for two, or are you one for two, or zero for two? Number three, here we go, iPhone or the Lumix. So number three, if you guess B, you are correct. That is indeed the iPhone. Smartphones nowadays are coming with such incredibly compact built camera systems that you can achieve some amazing results without, in many cases, spending $3,000 on a camera setup. This triple array of lenses are all equating to 12 megapixels each. So if you add all three of them up, that's almost a 36 megapixel camera. Whereas the Lumix G9, I believe is a 20.3 megapixel system. So according to Apple, it has the following. It has a triple base lens system at 12 megapixels on the rear camera, of course. It has one F 2.4 ultra wide angle lens. Now this lens also comes with a 120 degree field of view, which is pretty incredible based on an iPhone camera. Now this camera also has a two times optical zoom on it. So that second camera on the iPhone 11 Max is a f1.8 wide angle lens. You have an ultra wide angle lens and you also have a wide angle lens. And now the third lens on the iPhone 11 Max is a telephoto lens at f2.0. Those three lenses stitched together with computational photography, you get a really good depth of field, you get a nice bokeh on your photo, and you have automatically a photo that you can work with in software apps that can give you a pretty rockin' result. That's not to say that mirrorless cameras and DSLRs don't have that ability, because of course they do. If you have yourself a, a good lens at an f1.4 stop that gives you a really shallow depth of field, of course you can achieve things on a manual setup that an iPhone cannot. So how about a bonus round? Let's go one more time. How about iPhone or Lumix? If you guessed A, you guessed the iPhone, that's correct. So it's amazing to think about computational photography now in the realm of these phones that are coming out because it gives you really no excuse to be able to capture what you'd like to have in your photos. Yes, it, done, it does saturate and over contrast the photo, but you can change that in post-production. However, for all the you know amazing talk we're saying of the iPhone, you really in many ways cannot beat a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. Biggest reason why? The sensor is larger. It just lets in more light. Uh, you have also the ability of being able to attach different lenses to a Lumix G9 in this case, or a DSLR, Canon, Sony, whatever camera you have to achieve the professional effect. You can put speed adapters on it, you can use art lenses, you can use kit lenses, you can use cine lenses. You don't really have that option on an iPhone, save for some of the lenses you can get and attachment add-ons, but they're never the same quality as what you get with a, uh, a mirrorless or DSLR camera. So two reasons why the DSLR or mirrorless cameras will always win in my mind are because of the fact that they have the ability of putting on ND filters uh, directly onto the lens that are larger and wider, and also the fact that they don't depend on software for computational photography. In many cases, you have the photos on a phone, which it is software and it can crash. So if you're using it in an app, 
you may have corrupted files, you might have errors with particular settings on it when you get into more in-depth color grading. Whereas on a RAW file coming out of one of these cameras, it's not as, as prevalent you're gonna have an issue with a file unless your car corrupts. And speaking of Lightroom, regardless if you're shooting on an iPhone, if you're shooting on your mirrorless DSLR camera, you should have it. Disclaimer time, I'm not sponsored by Lightroom, Adobe, Apple, Lumix, or any manufacturer, but Lightroom really enables you to get the most out of your photo. So this episode was not basically to tell you to shoot on a $1,500 phone as compared to a $4,000 to $3,000 camera setup. It's just basically to tell you two things. If you have an iPhone, you can achieve some pretty amazing results. Practice with the settings that are on it. Practice with portrait mode. Practice with, with even just photo mode and really maximize the, the quality you can get out of your photos by taking it into an app and adjusting colors and curves to raise that level. Don't just point and click and then pop it on your social media feed because you can really manipulate your photo to do a whole host of moods that you want to achieve. 1970s grit, you can go for cinematic Hollywood, warm tones, cold tones. iPhone photos can now do it. And I think for us uh, Lumix shooters and professional base shooters, it's now a bit of a wake up call. It essentially forces us to really maximize our knowledge of our gear. These things are breathing down their necks. Use this time as an opportunity to really know your gear and your combination for what lenses you want to be shooting with because it might surprise you when you're checking out social media and to see a photo and think, oh yeah, that's a $7,000 Canon or a $6,000 Sony camera, when in reality, it's the same thing sitting in your back pocket. How did you guys do? Did you get four out of four or did you get zero out of four? <laughs> Leave those results below, as well as what app you like to use when you edit your photos on your phone. And uh, please hit that like and subscribe button below so you can keep up to date on all the videos we have coming up on tech and cameras and, and shooting techniques and how to get you the shot you want on the budget that you have. So until next time, try taking that smartphone out of your back pocket and using an app to edit those photos. You might be surprised with the results.